Right, well, before this video starts, I want to make a quick announcement, which is, yeah, look right there. That is awesome. I still don't know what to say, but I'm sure I want to say thank you to everybody who subscribed. You've got me over 800. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and make some long-winded speech, because I'm really shit at that, but... That is, to me, a landmark, you know, we've busted past 750, I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> it just went and kept going, it's sort of slowing down and levelling out, but I'm really happy with that. <laughs> that is awesome. So thanks to everybody, you know, you, th that's really cool. But, like I said, I'm crap at saying shit like that, so rather than make too much of an idiot of myself, I'm just going to run the video now. everybody, I am High Treason, and uh, yeah, I've got a computer video today, I'm currently sat on the floor, and yeah, there's a strong smell of ozone in here, I don't, I don't know what that's about, you'd almost think we were creating a shit ton of static electricity or something, but uh, yeah, there, there sure is somewhat, somewhat odd going on here, and uh, it has nothing to do with the video today, because really it needs quite a bit of time, but I tell you what, I think my laptop might just be able to make something interesting happen over there if I hit the return key. Oh, it takes a while. Yeah, uh, probably one of the most monstrous and inefficient devices I've ever constructed. But, um, you know what, I, I would certainly say we've got some interesting going on back there. Holy hell. Yeah, uh, what do you think of that? Video wall. Damn. Well, I'm, I keep knocking the mouse with the back of my head. Uh, that thing back there is uh, monstrously complicated and uh, it is ugly as sin. And uh, I, I do have some tweaks I would like to do. It's actually making the air stand up on the back of my head. I don't know. And I'm sat on the power cables. I'm not sure this is a real good idea. Um, one of those does arc occasionally, and I need to fix that. But yeah, this video today is actually quite a small one. I'll queue something else up there, just in case it runs out. And um, what um, what we want to do is, uh, is uh, someone on Vergons uh, wanted me, and now I complain about Vergons, but like I said, there are really good people on Vergons. It's just one or two assholes. You're going to get them anywhere. Anyway, somebody decent wants me to test something. They've done a bunch of benchmarks, and they're, they're a good person. They, they, they do stuff like this. And um, I figured, well, why the fuck not do as they've asked? They want to know, is VLB or PCI faster on my Pentium Overdrive? We're not going to go right into the guts of how my Pentium Overdrive works. It is an awesome machine, and it's black, which automatically makes it about 50% cooler at least. Um, I wasn't referring to, oh, never mind, read in that what you will, that wasn't my intention. But yeah, uh, I have two video cards the same on both interfaces. I don't have an ISA one, but that's a pointless test anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bung the thing over there, hook it up, test it out, and we'll see which one's faster. I've got to do some repairs to the hard drive first, as in the, the Windows install. But I'll just get it to DOS, for DOS to run, that's all we need to the test we're going to do. And uh, then we shall take a quick look at it. And uh, yeah, I set this thing up to, to look cool, because I wanted to catch people's attention with it. And don't worry, we are going to have a look at this at some point in the future. But hey, if you set one up and beat me to it, <laughs> I got there first, so <laughs> I've always wanted one of these. I'd, I would like uh, like a, a 9 by 9 colour one, but I, I don't think you can really do that in a council house. I don't think my electricity supply would stomach it. Um, but yeah, let's get on with that. And I just want to take a second to be quite honest and sincere with you about this setup. It is uh, by far the most monstrous and terrifying thing I have ever constructed. There is just something where when you see a mess like that on your surfer, you know you have a problem. It is quite a horrifying mess. So 
so here we go. These two cards, the Diamond Stealth 64 DRAM, an S3 Trio 64 base card, which was available in PCI VLB, and I believe also ISA. They've both been upgraded to 2 megabytes of RAM, and though the latency on the memory chips is a bit different, these 45 nanosecond ones are something you rarely see. Uh, it's going to have no impact, as the cards can't access it that fast anyway. As for the internal organs of my Pentium Overdrive, I'm not going to really go into a lot of detail, because it isn't finished yet. Every time I've been going to put the work in, I've had other priorities come up. So, things like this Ethernet card are temporary components, and one of those sound cards will be getting changed when I fix the one I want in here. Just disregard everything in here but the motherboard and the processor, basically. Nonetheless, this motherboard has both PCI and VLB, something which is often referred to as being a VIP motherboard. I am expecting the tests to be pretty even because this board uses the UMC AAA chipset, which is a fairly good PCI chipset for 486 systems, though the 8886 has ended up in a bunch of other platforms. It is probably outstripped by some of the late model SIS chipsets, but I find them to be quick enough and they usually work really well. That's about all I need to say about the computer. Though we do have adequate RAM in there at 48 megabytes, probably going to drop back to 32 later though, as I've only a 256k cache, and it's in wipeback mode, essentially halving the amount of cacheable RAM. In short, even if I used all that RAM, only 32 megs would be cacheable, and anything past that point would incur a huge performance drop, well, most likely. I also find that some programs perform worse if you increase the cache to silly levels on many 486 boards. So a 32 megabyte 256k combination is probably adequately overkill for such a machine. We're never going to need that anyway. As I don't want to punch more holes in the chassis, the Ethernet card is going to be absent in both tests, as I'm going to be using that slot for the VLB video card, and I don't want it to skew the results for the PCI one. I don't know that it would, but I'd rather have an identical configuration for both tests. Well, something's smelling a bit funky, and uh, I'm not sure whether it's the power supply. I can't quite figure out where it's coming from. Yeah, it's definitely that fan motor which is burning out. Yeah, power supply smells clean, so... Oh, this, this machine's had a very difficult berth so far. I've been working on it for years. I do wonder if it'll ever work properly. Well, then I just noticed something. Why the hell does this keep happening? Yeah, I, I, I kind of, little piece of trivial information, this CP memory here, I feel dirty saying those letters, I, I really do. Um, those are off a card that I, I got, was made in Eastern Europe, I got it from Russia. So, uh, it used a Cirrus chip, but I've never seen these memory chips anywhere else, so those might actually be Eastern European memory, which would be kind of cool. Those letters might not be pronounced that way, uh, if they're, you know, Russian chips. They, they might be pronounced differently. It's not always as it appears to uh, us ignorant English speakers. For example, B in uh, Russian, uh, they have a different alphabet, and that's actually more like V. Hence 220B on the bottom of this power brick is 220V, 220 volts. Uh, at least as far as I'm aware. So yeah, that is a Soviet power brick. And uh, if you know what it's for, then I'll be quite impressed. Uh, any Eastern Europeans out there? This, it wasn't made in Russia, this was made in uh, Belarus. Uh, oh, what city was it? I cannot remember. Anyway, here we go. It's test time. I'm going to run both tests on a 33 megahertz bus. So, 83 MHz CPU clock. Uh, this is the nominal setting for each bus, at least at the time. It wasn't 66 MHz PCI yet. Not for a few years. My BIOS settings are, as you can see, uh, I'll be using Windows 95 DOS to boot the system. I couldn't start the GUI if I wanted because AOL 4 broke it after I spent so long making the damn thing work. And nobody likes AOL anyway, so I've no need to elaborate on my opinions there. I'll be using my own benchmarking suite, because it's better than the one I used to use, at least in my opinion. Same metric though, so far as I'm aware, but I haven't really tested them side by side as yet. 
you can download release 1.0 uh, down in the description there and that is providing a fix the screen jumping bug seem to be behaving there anyway at least in test 0.80 anyway so uh, i imagine it still is unless i've completely broken it so it's superscape 1.0c the vlb card can achieve a score of 76.6 but the PCI one lags behind at 72.7, so you probably wouldn't really notice, but there is around a 5.1% decrease versus the VLB card here. Have to say, I would have guessed this might happen. Weirdly, PC player gets a score of 19.5 on both cards. Literally identical here, and I can't really see why. Perhaps this indicates a bottleneck elsewhere on this platform. Maybe the S3 chip can't go any faster, or perhaps something else in the computer is maxing out. I suppose it's entirely possible the CPU just can't compute this scene any faster, or that the CPU, even the memory bus, simply has no more bandwidth available to push the information through. Unfortunately, I don't have the tools to track this down and find out. Top bench results are, as ever, up in the air. 268 for the system with VLB and running PCI will get a score of 203 which is a bit miserable. This indicates using VLB is a whopping 32% faster for top benches testing criteria which is pretty nice. The landmark's broken on systems at this speed. So onwards to Doom which shows another difference. 1752 ticks for VLB versus 2168 for PCI. Yuck. Uh, about 23% slower for PCI then, uh, as more ticks equals more time equals less frame rate. About 42.63 frames per second for VLB versus 34.35 for PCI. At least, provided my formula's right, I'm inclined to think it is. They would actually be noticeable in some cases, especially in more detailed levels. Both are more than double what I consider a playable frame rate though. You have to wonder where the inefficiency is here, as that and top bench both show a significant drop for the PCI bus on this board, as if the data are bored and have just dropped into the local pub on the way past. I tried to look up a data sheet for the UMC AAA chipsets, but couldn't find one in my half arsed attempt. Still, might be worth looking at. So far as I can tell, the AAA 6 bridges the ISA bus to the PCI. So perhaps that's dragging the PCI bus down. Still, that does at least imply we'd have a real PCI bus on board. Some motherboards and chipsets didn't implement a real PCI bus and bridge things the other way from Visa Local Bus, which was really quite abysmal, to be honest. Quick hits 18 frames per second on both cards. This is interesting, as it's the same kind of behaviour as PC Player. In fact, a very similar score. I wonder if perhaps the FPU could be a limitation. And again, I'm not sure PC Player even uses that. I'd have to experiment further and I don't really have the time right now. It also implies this system doesn't really like the Trio 64 as much as it could because I get a marginally higher frame rate with the Verge I was using and even the PCI Cirrus card I was using temporarily before that one. I'm not sure how the intended Sen card's going to perform in here yet, but that's something I'll have to find out in the future if I can ever get it fixed. Still, that's the benchmarks done. I've posted the results on the forum for the guy who asked for them. I have here a graph I made to summarise the results I got in these tests, but I won't really go into detail on it because we've just been through what actually happened when I ran the tests, so it'd be a bit redundant. The VLB interfaces, as I think we all probably knew really, the faster interface on the 486 platform. Uh, at least we know by how much on this motherboard now, and I imagine it'd be pretty similar for other motherboards using this chipset. And before I cut back to me on camera and whatever, I want to apologise if I've sounded a bit distant and distracted throughout this. It's taken a lot of takes, but I've got a splitting headache that just won't go away. And I know what it is, and it, it's something simple, so it's nothing to worry about, but... Yeah, it, it makes it quite difficult to focus on reading my script. So I'm sorry if I've sounded like a bit off-put throughout this one. That, that, that shouldn't become a thing, so <laughs> yeah, bear with me. Well, uh, 
we learnt whatever we learnt uh, for convenience sake because this is taking up pretty much my entire living room I'm recording this ending before I've done the tests and uh, on top of that I did worry for my health the room isn't well ventilated right now with it being winter and uh, I'm sure I'm breathing a lot of ozone in and uh, yeah so we've learnt whatever we've learnt my guess on this and you can actually look at the video see that it did only advance a few seconds that's uh, Shannon into my life it's not Eurodance from 1994 um, I would like to have the sound on but uh, I want to release this under Creative Commons uh, yeah so you know my guess is going to be VLB is going to be faster with the UM8881 8886 combination there because it's a 486 and it's pretty much a direct path to the processor even though it's a Pentium overdrive and uh, that's going to be my guess but I may be wrong so if I am, well, then I'll have said before, and uh, I'll be putting text on the bottom of the screen, calling myself an idiot if that's the case, or arrogant, oh, I was right text if I was right, and uh, that's that's really all I have to say for today, I'm, I don't want to talk about the move, but yeah, I know I'm still sat here, yeah, I assure you it is happening, and um, well, that's, that's me out of here, the, the last trick I have to do here is, uh, I'm not sure I typed that right, did I? I'm going to just send that again just to be s sure, you know. Now it should uh, start doing some interesting. There we go. And uh, yeah, that system should now turn itself off gracefully. And um, this Telnet session here probably kick me out. So yeah, if you wondered, I had, um, oh, that's the wrong command, isn't it? Right, it's going to turn the video off, but never mind. Uh, I'm amazed we can still run that. But yeah, evidently I am controlling this thing via Telnet. It's, it's, it's going berserk, this thing. Anyway, I, I need to refine my program. It's, uh, it's not working the way it's supposed to. But uh, yeah, that, that'll boot me out. And this machine is... Uh, shutting itself down but this thing I, I don't know I don't know what's wrong with it uh, there's something wrong with this thing uh, I, I will try and fix it another time yeah it's 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 gone barmy so well am, am I treason I'm gonna get out of here thanks for watching and uh, I will see you again in the future wow I, I really did break my uh, my little ten that server there was a little bit redundant wasn't it but I don't think it was terrible and uh, well now we know that's what happens on that particular thing but of course your results may vary depending on motherboard uh, I wish my MS4144 was still working that was my old DX4100 I had ages ago and uh, I think I'd said in every video it showed up in the board was flaky and it, it was rough and that was the whole reason I built a Pentium 60 was to replace it yeah, you know, kind of, it, it sort of started, oh, build a 586, and then that didn't work, and I was like, we'll build a Pentium 60, and that didn't work so well, of course, now it does, and, uh, yeah, somewhere in that, I was like, I'm going to build an overkill 486, because I, I love the 486 platform, I don't know why, I just really like it, uh, I can't get enough of it, nothing like, I never like another machines look as much as I like my 486SX, I don't know what it is, I just have a weird affinity with that thing, it, it always works for me, and yeah, I, I always have a fun time when I'm using that. And uh, yeah, the Pentium Overdrive, though, I think will be a good machine when it's finished. I don't have much of anything to go on about in this, other than, like I say, I am stuck for time on shit. And uh, hopefully this camera's working through this, because I don't even know if I can get you any footage out of it from when I've been at the other house, but taking it in there fucks it up. And uh, I think you saw in the last update, it was going a bit weird, but... It just, I took it in there one time and it completely freaked out. 
And it wasn't a good thing because there was a real serious issue and I needed to get it on film and I, I got enough of it out but if I can't get you any footage I should at least be able to get you a still image of what it's doing. So yeah, whatever, you know, dodgy image, corrupt audio, the motion tracking's constantly trying to track things that aren't there, it goes, it gets stuck out of focus, I can't get it to work, it says the memory card's right protected and isn't, it, it's completely balmy and it, it's starting to kick off a bit in this house, but it's nowhere near as bad, you know, it'll just be, oh, right protected and I just shut the door up and it, it comes back to life. So, I don't know what's going on there, the camera's a bit knackered anyway, I would like to get a new one at some point this year. Uh, it hasn't done bad to say it wasn't a camera I wanted, and it, it wasn't real expensive, so I don't really begrudge it. I don't like the fact that it, it lies and it's not really full HD or anything, but what can you do? At the end of the day, that's the manufacturer's fault. Uh, I couldn't get another one at the same price. I didn't want to blame the seller because he's just listing what it says on the side and I, I did get it real cheap. It was a display model so I'm like, well, it works. We'll roll with it and replace it later. So I've, I've had it a lot longer than I thought I was going to. And uh, yeah, otherwise, there's going to be a few things. Uh, as I said at the start of the video, holy hell, we, got, we beat 800. God damn, you know, I... I already said at the start, but I cannot express my appreciation for everybody who's pressing. What the hell's moving around over there? Uh, I don't know, I haven't even been over there. <laughs> Fuck knows. Mice. Possibly. <laughs> that would suck. Uh, I doubt it. But, you know, I, I can't express my appreciation enough. That's, that's cool. And, uh, yeah, a long time ago I said I'd do this viewer special thing. And I... I will at some point. I haven't forgotten about that. But hey, if anybody has any more ideas of stuff you would like me to do, you know, say it. But I mean, I, I'm still not going to make any guarantees I will do things I'm asked. But hey, if you ever want to suggest something to me, just suggest it anyway, because it might be a good idea. And uh, yeah, we're, we're far from out of shit to do around here, because I mean, I've obtained a rather strange little device, and this is the only one that I've ever heard of uh, anywhere. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, I don't think so because I can find no information on this anywhere on the internet, but needless to say, as I've tested so far, it does work a little bit intermittently, but that's partly down to the board it's on and there's a capacitor on here that has a hole in it, so yeah, I found if I put my finger on the bottom of the, the capacitor's pins, it, it boots up every time, so I'm like, well, that capacitor's just fucked, so <laughs> it's through hole, we can get it off and put a new one, so yeah, I don't know if you can figure out what that does, but it does it, it actually does work. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've got some plans for that, if it if I can get it to do them anyway, but that's a long way down the line. Otherwise, this YouTube channel, some point this year, <laughs> I can't say when, the channel trail is going to get redone, because that's way out of date, and I don't really... Uh, it is good, It, I think it gets the message across, but I'd like to come up with something a bit more to the point, you know, in your fucking face, just sort of comes out the blue, like, this is who I am, this is what I'm about, and doesn't have shit that I don't do anymore, because I think there's one or two things mentioned in there. Uh, otherwise, there's not really anything too major going to happen here that's going to upset anything, other than, of course, long gaps until this move's done. I'm hoping that's going to hurry up. The council's dragging their arse on shit, is all I can really say on that. Uh, had a real serious issue, but that seems to have resolved itself. And, uh, yeah, my website as well. I want to do some little alterations to that, and I don't know when those will be either, but I do have plans for it. That little graph I made is kind of just me testing the waters for being able to do that. And I was thinking, I don't think anybody will ever really bother with it, but uh, it could be quite interesting, because... All the computers I've got, once I make my mind upon a configuration, I actually have a piece of paper somewhere on the case, usually on the underside, and tells me everything about the machine on a table. It's all segmented, so they all have the same layout and the same bits and pieces on the table, but, it, you know, the table's specific to each machine. It's quite easy to go in and just print another one off. I change the configuration or whatever. And I was like, well, that's useful to me if I forget what's in there or how it performs in benchmarks, because I stuff all that information onto the labels. So I'm like, well, 
well, I'll say label this piece of A4 paper, sellotape to the bottom. It, it served its purpose. And I was like, well, I could put that on my website. I could actually have a thing where it goes in detail on all the pieces in each machine I have. I could have a graph full of benchmarks. Uh, those would all be my own benchmarks. I don't, I, I don't doubt I could use something and just start accepting submissions from other people, but it, it's a pain in the arse, and I don't really have time to mess with things like that. You know, I have uh, in real life stuff to do, unfortunately, a lot of the time. But yeah, at least I can put my stuff there, and then I don't know. Anybody's curious about what what sort of stuff things do? Like I don't know, maybe you want to. You built a 486 SX and you want to reference it against mine or something. See if you can get yours to go faster, because it probably could. I don't think mine's maxing the bar. I think it's pretty much the fastest SX at that clock I've ever seen. But let's not say somebody couldn't beat it. I'm sure somebody could. So, yeah, that's uh, sort of what I might do in the future. I don't know when. Excuse me, that that was really itching me. I, I was trying to hold on, but I'm like, no, it, it itches too bad. I have to do something with that. Uh, been sleeping a bit dodgy the past few days. I, I feel a bit better today. Still a bit, <laughs> but that's the way things be, isn't it? Anyways, I'm my trees, and I'm going to get out of here. I think I should probably go and eat something. I'm about an hour late on a meal. It's no wonder I feel dodgy. <laughs> right, cool. Well, I'll go and do that, and then I'll I'll get on with editing this video, and then you will be seeing this video. And yeah, if you want to download my benchmarking suite, then go ahead and download it. And if anything's broke, then by all means leave a comment on the video saying you fucking shit. I'm making this download. It's terrible, and I will do my best to make it slightly less worse. Because yeah, it's really not that smart. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it's not, not very sophisticated. What? It went down the wrong way. It's one of them days. This is the best bloody take I'm going to get, so I'm just going to roll with it. But, yeah, you know, by all means, cuss at me if it doesn't work. And, uh, yeah, I'm getting out of here then, properly this time. And, uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing, pressing whatever buttons you're going to press because people do that, that's a thing, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm high treason, thanks for watching as always, and I will see you again in the future.